One of the biggest concerns that most parents of newborns have is sleep. The great news is uh, that you can't really make any sleep mistakes in those first three months. But there are things you can do now to help set your baby up for success when it comes to sleep down the road. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through some newborn and baby sleep tips and tricks uh, that you can use to ensure your baby is getting the best sleep possible and to also know when to call bullshit on your friends who brag about their babies being perfect little sleepers. Hey, this is John with Fathercraft. Did you know that we have online courses for new and expecting parents? No? Well, we do. So if you wanna find out more about those courses, go to fathercraft.com slash courses. So the following tips are partly based on my experience as a dad of two, but mostly come from the advice of an actual expert. Uh, that is Dr. Natalie Barnett who is the director of clinical research at Nanit. So tip number one, sleep patterns vary wildly the first few weeks, so don't expect to establish a sleep routine. We know that newborns sleep a lot um, and that your baby is its own little person. So what's normal for one baby may be very different for your baby. The point here is there is no normal. So does it make it normal? Does the fact that there is no normal make that by definition normal? Okay, I think I need to go lay down for a minute. So for the first couple of months, it's going to be really hard to expect any sort of schedule from your baby. What makes this more chaotic is that for babies, there is no difference between day and night, mainly because they haven't started to produce melatonin yet. That melatonin factor usually kicks on in around the six week mark, and that's when babies start to see the difference between day and night. Your baby is a teeny tiny pharmaceutical genius. <laughs> It's pretty amazing. So melatonin is going to be the hormone that regulates or starts to regulate their circadian rhythm. And that's when it's going to start to indicate to your baby that there is actually a difference between daytime and nighttime. Unlike your teenager, uh, when they revert to uh, daytime being nighttime and uh, nighttime being daytime, and it, it all becomes confusing again. All right, sleep tip number two, and this kind of builds off the first tip. The duration of your baby's sleep is also going to vary wildly. Many first time parents are obsessed with sleep schedules and getting their baby on one. Once again, I will repeat, in those first couple of months, it's usually really hard to expect any sort of schedule from your baby. I mean, your baby may nap for two and a half hours, or your baby may only nap for like 15 minutes. This phase won't last forever, so try to be zen about it. In the words of dads everywhere, this too shall pass. And this is a totally normal part of the experience. Moving on to tip number three sleep when your baby sleeps. Honestly, and I, and I hate to be cliche about this, uh, but they don't say sleep when your baby sleeps for nothing. All those household chores that piled up don't need to be done during the times your baby sleeps, mainly because when your babies are awake, they kind of have to do what you have to do and they really can't go anywhere. But also because as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be hard to predict how long your baby is going to be asleep. So you might get in the middle of some sort of chore or another and then your baby wakes up. And I don't know if it's just me, but a half done chore is just as bad as an undone chore. That said, you could revise it too. do whatever relaxes you or calms your brain. You know how lack of sleep affects you. So just do what you can to prioritize rest for yourself during the newborn phase. So from the clinical side of things, and this comes from Dr. Barnett, when you're not sleeping, you can't function properly. It's, it's important for the whole family to be, to be sleeping well, to, to be able to function well as a family, you all need to be, mm. all need to be sleeping well. Mm. So I, you know, so sleep is, absolutely important for your baby but sleep is important for you too you yeah. know and it's really important that to me um that we think about that we, that we think about sleep holistically so get yourself some sleep all right moving on to tip number four setting up a good sleep environment this is kind of like dressing up for the job you want not the job you have now the aap recommends your baby sleep in the same room as you for the first three months or so so these principles apply to whatever room your baby's sleeping in now, dr barnett told me a great anecdote Think of the crib as like a gym for your baby. You need to give them space so they can start to do 360s or get to move on their side or get themselves on their tummies. So this will give them more opportunity to explore than if they were in a smaller bassinet. Also, and probably most importantly, nothing should be in the crib space. No loveys, blankets, crib liners, etc. This is A number one with a bullet because this is what the AAP recommends. And two, all that stuff can just get in the way of your baby moving around and giving them the opportunity to explore. Now, the positioning of the crib is also really important important. Try and position the crib along a blank wall and away from windows and air vents. Sometimes there can be a draft through the window or little cracks of light that peek through. It can be very stimulating for your baby 
particularly in the early morning hours when it's much harder for them to fall back asleep. Air vents will also cause fluctuations in temperature that can mess with your baby's body temperature. So the more stable the uh, ambient temperature, the better sleeping environment your baby will have. Ideally, you want the temperature to hover around 72 degrees, but again, the more important aspect to this is to try and maintain a consistent temperature. Now, if you're thinking my baby's environment has more climate requirements than my father-in-law's wine cellar, you're correct and I wanna meet your father-in-law. You also want the crib away from loose cords. This is extremely important, especially as your baby gets more mobile. If you're using a wall-mounted baby monitor, it's important that it comes with a cord management system that keeps the cords hidden and out of reach. You know, tuck it like a drag queen. Keeping whatever room your baby is sleeping in as dark as possible is also vital in promoting a good sleeping environment. The newer your baby, the harder it will be for her to fall back asleep. So invest in blackout curtains, or if you're on a budget, simply tape some black trash bags to the window like your Dexter. It may seem a bit weird, but it'll definitely do the trick. <laughs> and also freak out your mother-in-law when she sees a bunch of black trash bags lining your windows. Having some sort of white noise machine can also go a long way in creating a good sleeping environment. Whether it's a dedicated white noise machine like the hatch rest or using the white noise feature on your baby monitor, it's going to drown out outside noises of older brothers running around or dogs barking or you know your neighbor knocking on the door, whatever the case is. But it's also going to become somewhat of a sleep association for your baby. So they'll hear the white noise when they go to bed at night, they'll hear it when they wake up in the middle of the night and they'll be like, hey, there's that noise again, must mean I should still be sleeping and they'll try to get themselves back to sleep, hopefully. But the more they hear the noise, the more they associate it with sleep, and the more they're gonna get themselves back to sleep easier at night. Tip number five is swaddling your baby. Newborns often experience something called the Moro reflex, otherwise known as the startle reflex, which has a nasty habit of waking your baby. So swaddling your baby gives them a nice tight feeling around their body that helps to calm the baby's central nervous system, which in turn helps prevent that startle reflex. They're also less likely to scratch their eyes and faces with those tiny sharp little fingernails. You can do this uh, the old fashioned way by wrapping your baby in a blanket so they look like an overstuffed burrito, or you can use a Velcro wraps, which in my opinion are much more effective and less prone to user error. Now that being said, not all babies are alike and your baby potentially will rebel against said swaddle. If that's the case, then just don't swaddle. All right, looking for even more tips, tricks, and secrets to get your baby to become a pro sleeper? Well, fortunately, we've got a lot more of this came from on our baby sleep video course. And since you've made it to the end of this video, you can get it for a top secret, ridiculously discounted price just by heading over to fathercraft.com sleep. Again, that's fathercraft.com slash sleep, slash sleep, slash sleep, slash sleep. Those S's, they get me. All right, people, appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. They don't take it? Yeah, okay. If they like it, great. If they don't like it, it doesn't matter. Okay, no. great. So when should babies stop using the pacifier? It's a much better question. Thank you. Um, oh, <laughs> you know, I just, I, I'm doing that. If I say something that sounds strange, it's... It's my satirical type of humor, so I, I don't want That's great. <laughs> so, no, what, I, what I meant to say was,